It's time for the Giz Whiz with man's maddest writer, Dick D. Bartolo. This is episode 1589, recorded Monday, September 19th, 2016. Cut off for your safety. This episode of the Gizwiz is brought to you by Warby Parker. Warby Parker makes high quality, stylish, and affordable glasses at a starting price of only $95, including the prescription lenses. Find out more at warbyparker.com slash gizwiz. On this episode of the Giz Whiz, get your yoga mats out because Dick has a laptop that is flexible. And if you have an iPhone 7, don't worry, we got some great wireless headphone options for you. And then come aboard because we're gonna take a flight into the sky with my crappy corner. So fasten your seatbelts, it's time for the Giz Whiz! Show with Dickie D. And OMG chat on your PC. It's time for the Gizwiz because gadgets are his business. They've got a gizmo sickness, geek disease. Under pathology, rows and rows of USBs, growing blue and LEDs. Get ready for the Gizwiz now. Now it is time for the Gizwiz, and here he is, the savant of gadgets. Dick D. Bartolo. How you doing? Wow, Dick savant. I, yeah. That's the first time. I've ever heard you use that word. <laughs> I'm a savant of words. Uh, wow, you really? are. You I mean, are. <laughs> yeah, I've been working on them. <laughs> How are uh, you doing? Gonna take, I'm doing good. Uh, we're both crazed because uh, I'm going to Interbike, and so we're taping ahead of time. And fortunately, a lot of people joined the chat room, and you're going to... Minecon. Minecon. Minecon the Minecraft convention. Oh, that's got to be big for you, right? Uh, it's this is probably the the biggest convention of the year for for me. Yes, uh, it's not the biggest convention I'll go to, but personally for me, it's the biggest deal. So yeah, um, that's in Anaheim, California, and n so whenever I leave, I of course I have to record everything ahead of time that I normally do. Uh, so that's one reason why I'm crazed, and the other one is I'm sick. <laughs> I, oh, no. I came down with a cold that I've been uh, trying to get rid of. I'm so afraid I'm leaving tomorrow at 10 a.m. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid I'm going to be the person to bring all the con cred uh, to oh, uh, <laughs> the convention. I'm going to be patient zero. I feel like I always get sick right before a convention. Uh, oh, I always thought you always got sick on the way back. That's how most people do it. I think that the stress of making sure that everything is in line before I get on the plane always gets me sick. And uh, it's and it, uh, I'm frustrated because I know of so many people that it seems like every other day they're sick. And it's just like, you can't be sick that often. But, you know, my throat is totally sore. I've been oh sneezing. God. And, you know, I have a you know, big box of Kleenex right here. Um, so uh, it's been frustrating to, to uh, have to deal with that uh, right before the convention. But pushing through. We're getting, getting all the pushing work Pushing through. Yes, do. yes, yes, exactly. It, I have it in a, in a much smaller way. Is, uh, ABC was last night, so I had to get the pet gadgets for that. And then I'm trying to... Uh, do the thing for Mad Magazine, and then I'm trying to get our website for the show done before I fly because I'm not back till Friday. And yeah, so it is. W when you're freelance, there's really no such thing as a vacation. That's <laughs> absolutely what, true. Whatever you normally do, you, you just can't stop. still <laughs> you still do it, except you do it before and after. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> there's, uh, uh, and it's like I got called in for um, jury duty at one point, and they're <laughs> like, "Is this gonna affect your work?" And it was like, um, "Any day that I'm not working, I don't get paid. I don't have paid off time, yes. and I don't, you know, the whole law where like you gotta pay your employee whenever they're doing jury duty. That doesn't apply to me because no one will pay me if I don't show up." Because I'm all freelance. So that was... And they let you off? Uh, in that situation, no. I actually had okay. to go and do jury duty. This was about uh, four years ago when I was working. Oh, this was before Twit. 
Um, um. Uh, but yeah, because I just couldn't figure out. It's so hard to explain to someone. I am my own employer, and uh, and what we do. That's also very I- difficult to explain. So. I just didn't, and I went and did the jury duty, and I uh, didn't get paid. So, yeah. Yeah, it wasn't that bad. I, I had to only go in for a day, and then it was, uh, the, uh, we had just enough jurors to go through the selection process, but after the um, lawyers excluded the people they didn't want, then we didn't have enough jurors anymore, so we all got called off, and we all had our day the, at jury duty, and we didn't have to come oh. back. It was, wow. so it was kind of okay. Wow. Kind I just okay. usually go in and say, I watched every episode of Perry Mason, <laughs> and I intend to be excellent. And they usually go, sir, you could leave. <laughs> <laughs> sir, you're good. there's the door. Yeah. There's the door. Yeah, exactly. Door. Yeah, you come in with a... Uh, <laughs> I don't know, anarchist cookbook in one arm and the Constitution in the other, and you say, listen, I've read both of these and I'm conflicted. No, I don't know. Um, Uh, I remember one of the former editors, co-editors, said to me, I've been called twice and I get up and I say, I'm co-editor of Mad Magazine. And they go, "Um, (laughs) you sound like you have an important job. You're off the ticket. (laughs) You're off the ticket. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, I go. I work for the Gizwiz. They go. Oh, I don't. Know. I don't know about mm-hmm. this. Anyway, exactly. uh, I guess let's jump into some gadgets. Uh, yeah, well, let's do it. Well, let's do it. Uh, and one of the fun things I did last week was uh, to attend the holiday spectacular. Uh, it's a an event in New York. It's a Pepcom event. Pepcom does these great uh, gadget events, and their biggest in New York City is their holiday spectacular because it's all the gadgets that are coming out between now and Christmas. And I had heard about this gadget because it was introduced, was it last week at, uh, in Berlin at the uh, IFA. But this was my first look and most likely your first look at this from Lenovo. Hey, Dixie Bartolo, Mads Metastroy, to end the Gizwiz One Take Theater here at gizwiz.tv. We're at Lenovo, and I got this email that Lenovo's doing something different with keyboards, and we figured our buddy Sam will have the inside story. So, Sam, what is going on? All right, well, this is a tablet that you've never seen before. First thing you'll notice when I turn this, uh, open this up, is you'll notice the unique Tron-like keyboard. Very unique. You've never seen it before. It's a capacitive keyboard. Um, what it does is it um, allows us to do a lot of cool things with a tablet, right? You know, with a traditional keyboard, you have to make room for a key travel, um, and you know, you take up space. You have less room for a battery. This has allowed us to put a very large battery in there. Uh, it's allowed us to put an actual you know, keyboard in there so when you're typing, you're not using your thumbs to type on the tablet, right? And another thing we've been able to add to this, um, the yoga book here is a special uh, Wacom digitizing layer. Now this gives the device you know, full pressure sensitivity, all right? You come in here with one of your uh, pins. Wow, if this is an actual Wacom pin too, and you can use this like uh, any sort of Wacom drawing pad. Wow. You know? So it's pretty neat, isn't it? It's I, I, that using, is insane. Right? Yeah. And having the Wacom name so you can brand come in here and take notes. is a big deal. Um, great for, so how did you turn the keyboard? There's this, you turned the keyboard off? Yeah, it's as simple as pressing this button right here. You that is yep. really neat. Really cool. Something that a tab, no other tablet can do this. All right, so this is a, uh, an Android tablet. This is an Android tablet. Okay, um, and the size of the screen? 10.1 inches. 10.1. Uh, full, full HD resolution. A- and fold it up to show us the thinness. Yeah, so this is a very thin device. Well, that hinge you know. looks cool. As you can see, we, we uh, engineered it very thin. It took us three years uh, to develop this product. Uh, typical uh, development life cycle is about nine months. Wow. So we put a lot of engineering to this. And product. the price point on this guy? Price point on the Android uh, version is four ninety nine USD uh, US dollars, and then um, we have a Windows version. The Windows version will be available as well. It'll be uh, f- uh, five forty nine, and all these will be available before the holidays, 
uh, around the end of September and October. Okay, so nothing on the market quite now. And Sam, tell us the name of the two different models we saw. Uh, both of these are called Yoga Books. Uh, this is just the Android version and the Windows version. I love version. these hinges. Yes. These are just... A watch, band, a watch band hinge, and we put a lot of development to that. That took us you know, 10 to 12 revisions uh, to really get that right. Wow, and the funny thing is I, I thought of that last night, and already they have it. <laughs> uh, this is really yeah. great. Dick D. Bartolo, Maz Metis, to and the Gizwiz, one take theater here at gizwiz.tv. Some new stuff from Lenovo. Bye. That is uh, cool on a few different levels. Uh, first off, you know, a few years ago I might have scoffed at, the, at that type of keyboard, where it's not actual physical keys, you're just kind of typing on a smooth surface and you just have lights to kind of determine. But now everyone has spent hours and hours typing on a screen on an iPad or Windows, you know, tablet, and it's not a big deal anymore. Everyone has gotten so used to just knowing where a key is and predictive typing has gotten so good. That doesn't matter anymore. So I feel like it's not that crazy of a step to have a keyboard that isn't really have any physical traveling keys. Um, and then the Wacom name brand it really, to me, means something. The Wake, Wacom Wacom technology uh, is different than all other technology and is really, really, really well done. And to have an actual Wacom tablet inside, uh, or Wacom Surface inside of a tablet, it is pretty cool. Yeah. Yes. I, and I like and this. that the keyboard goes in and out when you want it and the tablet, yeah. the Wacom technology kicks in when you want it. Yeah, it's it's pretty neat. And it's And there's so a Windows version, you know, it's not just a an Android no. version. You got a full Windows 10 experience. Exactly. It's the Intel uh, Atom X5. It's four gigabytes of memory and sixty-four gig, uh, four gigabytes of memory for um, the like uh, operating. Yeah. Right. Yes. And sixty-four memory. For the and the hard prices drives. are pretty decent compared to uh, the uh, yeah. Microsoft tablet. Isn't that like nine hundred dollars or something? Yeah. The, the, uh, surf the, Pro, the Surface. Yeah, the Surface Pro. Yeah. Pro. Is pretty yeah. expensive. What was the cost again of this tablet? Uh, I think it was four ninety nine for the Android version. Oh, they 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 taking pre orders? Yeah. Yeah. And and I think five forty nine for the Windows version. Interesting. And it looks like yeah, there's yeah. There it is. Yeah. yeah, for the Windows. Interesting. There's a few and people that, in the chat room saying, you know, as a digital artist, uh having that uh Pin that tablet is really cool. Well, it's the first time Dennis ever expressed an interest in a tablet when the guy <laughs> said, "White Wacom, what, what? You can draw on that?" Yeah. Yeah, he's very interested. Also, uh, Lenovo's been doing some really interesting stuff the past few Absolutely. years. Absolutely. That, that yeah. hint, that 360 degree hinge is neat. Very clever yeah, stuff. Yeah, that hinge and, looks cool. This is a really interesting product. Um, you know, my older sister is an artist and has always been looking for an, a, a product, uh, you know, and, and feels kind of slighted by the capacitive screens uh, that really, you know, for an artist who's used to a Wacom tablet, um, uh, you know, just a capacitive screen without rotation or, or real pressure sensitivity has been kind of frustrating uh, that, that, you know, that the technology is going in that direction instead of a, you know more of a of a Wacom you know style. Um, yeah, and Wacom has has built in some technology into some products, but a lot of people use uh, basically a knockoff version that isn't as good. Uh, this has two thousand and forty eight levels of pressure sensitivity. I wonder if it does uh, uh, angle as well. Uh, it's hard to read, you know, so quickly. Uh, and I mean, it, it it is there is a completely different technology. Wacom's technology. You don't need a battery in the pin. Uh, it uses this crazy, like, um, radio wave, like sort of thing to determine exactly how far away the pin really? is from the uh, from the surface. I mean, it's it's a really really um, 
Electromagnetic resonance. Yeah. Oh, there it is. Yes, yeah, I had their albums. It's yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Uh, yeah, their compilation albums are the yeah. best. No, pe people in the chat room are saying that uh, Eric Duckman said, I thought th this would be more than a thousand bucks. I agree. Oh, this yeah, is no, a it is. cool product. Yeah, yeah. it's a 10.1 inch and it's, it's uh, IPS, so it's full HD. Uh, Dolby Atmos Sound. Uh, it, it's. It's a lot of bang for your buck. For five, yeah, for five fifty yeah. for the Windows edition, um, and the Windows edition it looks like it comes only in black, uh, but the oh, okay. Android edition comes in gold, gray, and black as well. Yeah, uh, I almost, I almost like it when companies don't have seventy nine pages of options. <laughs> Yeah. You, you know, where you start out, the computer is four dollars, and then yeah. you add in the options, and then it's four thousand nine hundred. I agree. And the and, and there's you know, if you know anything about computers, you basically know you need at least the three hundred and fifty dollar option to yes. be able yes. to run, and right. then everything. Yes, I agree. Where it's yeah. just like you know what, you're gonna have everything you need in here. Yes. You're, you're and good then to go. Toward the end, I think they realize that you're buying a lot of options. I think they start adding things like, uh, do you want a desk? Do you want to buy a desk to put this on? <laughs> exactly. Uh, would you like our T-shirt? Would, would you like to buy our T-shirt? Right. Do yes. you want a, uh, a suitcase? That this <laughs> yeah. How about a desk lamp? How about a desk chair? Yeah. So Anyway, yeah. so that's pretty neat. Uh, a yoga book from Lenovo coming I believe he said September, October, and I think the press release said September. It's starting out, I believe, in Europe and then in the States uh, toward the end of October. But there's a link on my website to the info page for that. Interesting. Okay, moving on. Another interesting gadget um, is SwitchMate, and I'll let the guy uh, at the company tell you what that is. Hey, Dick D. Bartolo, Mads Metis writer, and the Gizwiz, One Take Theater here at gizwiz.tv. So I'm walking down, and I see a sign that says, One Second Installation. One Second. <gasps> so, Dean, where is this One Second Installation that's going to make my lighting uh, in the house smart? Okay, well, it's available virtually everywhere. We'll be in 18,000 storefronts next month. We're already at Bed Bath Beyond, Target, Amazon, and so on. But the way it works is literally you take it out of the box and it magnetically attaches instantly over an existing light switch. And you have an instant smart home. You know, it, uh, it, are the majority of switch plates always metal? No, no, no. It doesn't have to be metal. It's the screws. Oh, it's the two screws. It's the two screws are always in the same space on every switch plate in America. And we use the magnets to attach it to those. Okay, but, but then, all right, so, so leave me on from there. All right, so we, we have the switch. So you literally take it out of the box, you put it on. We say one second installation. It's actually less than that. It's about a half second. Wait a minute. All right, I'll give you three quarters of a second and not a second less, <laughs> not a fraction less. So then you simply download the app and then you have complete control of your lighting from your phone. But more importantly, in the future everyone is focused on is the automated lighting. So you never walk into a dark home again. When you walk up to your house, the porch light comes on automatically. It senses the phone when it's within range. You walk into your family room, the light comes on. You walk into your bedroom, the light comes on. And then when you go to bed at night, you can turn the light out from your phone. You don't have to get up. So is this connected to anything that we can see it go on or off? Yeah. It's just, it just is the app right here. So literally, it's, I it's just that tiny little on my LED. Phone, yeah, I was looking for a big lamp switch. or something. Instantaneous. And, and what is happening behind there? This is actually a mechanical device. It actually moves the toggle. So we've taken the world's best Bluetooth transceiver and tied it with a mechanical DC motor to control your light switch. That is a riot. Now, now what do these cost? They're $39.99. And right now they're available at Amazon, Fry's Electronics, Bed Bath Beyond, Target. But by next month, they'll be in 18,000 storefronts, Home Depot, Walmart. 
And, and then are they each addressable? I mean, how do you know what light goes on from the app, or is it the one you're closest to? No, 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 no. You can control it all in the app. You can control up to 12 switch mates in a home. Are we using Bluetooth? What are we using? All Bluetooth. We all Bluetooth. We want the consumer to have to configure Wi-Fi. The whole key to this was to remove that complexity barrier. So you have to be within about 100 feet. Correct. Yeah, this is actually spec'd at 120, but you know that's unobstructed view. Yeah. Right? That's if you're turning lights on and off out in an open field. Right, right, right. Uh, so we already are compatible also with the Wink Hub, so you have, and by January we'll have Alexa yay. compatibility for the Amazon Echo yay. Home Kit for Apple, Nest, Samsung Home, and Google Home. Unbelievable. It, it will be, this will break this category from the niche it is today into the mass market consumer. So every home now in America can have smart. And I see two models. So one is for. One is for the rocker and one is for the toggle. One is for the toggle. Yeah, that simple. That is really great. I like it. Dick D. Bartolo, Mads Metis writer, and the Gizwiz, one take theater here at gizwiz.tv. Oh, my lights just went out. Bye. That is, oh, that's so cool. And, the, and one of the really good things about it is its price point. Because you cannot buy a smart home device under $60, it feels like. You can't get a light bulb. You can't get a, a switch. There's so many things uh, that you can't get. And also, uh, you know, I have light switches that control multiple lights. And so if I wanted to make each one of those lights smart, I'd have to spend the money for each one versus one $40 toggle. Um, well, don't, don't forget now, you need one switch plate for every light. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, well, I mean, yeah, for every switch. You need one switch oh, for, plate for, for every, every switch. switch right. right. So, so that there are some uh, things to be aware of is like <laughs> they gave me one to test. And when I got home, I, I'm thinking, I don't think I, I have one normal light switch. Uh, in the living room here, I have a slider, a, a, a dimmer slider. <laughs> a that, dimmer that can't work. slider. Okay, I go yeah. into my front apartment, the living room. It's a turn knob. Oh, my uh, gosh. Oh, no, right, right. I finally found the kitchen, my kitchen, <laughs> not in the back, because my kitchen uh, in the back has a double gang switch. That don't work. Oh, no. But, in my studio, I have a mini kitchen, um, <laughs> and that has the old-fashioned toggle switch. And by gosh, it does! It does click on, and it is someone. I, someone in the chat room. That was my first question: Is what if you don't have your phone? Yes, you just hit the switch like a normal. Yeah, there's switch. a button you, on the front. Yeah. And and it's kind of funny because it's always the same button. It, it you hit the top of the switch whether you want it. It just goes to it just whatever. does the opposite. Yeah, the, the the opposite. So there it is. And and uh, now it runs on two AA. At first, when he was talking about it, I'm thinking, is Bluetooth strong enough to flip a light switch? Yeah. <laughs> and, and then when he said a DC motor. Uh, I realized, oh, so th these things, uh, they're, uh, actually, they're kind of handsomely designed. It doesn't I look like outrageous. Them. This is another knockout product I feel like I'm going to yeah. buy. Yeah, this is. And, and when they start integrating with every other kind of system. Um, yeah, I was and, wondering, and, Wink. Oh, I yeah. hope it works with Wink. Oh, I so hope it works with Wink. That's the one I've well, gotten they, behind. He, um, he, you know, I, uh, he mentioned a lot he of companies. He, he that, said but, Wink. That's when I was like, well, yay! He, at yeah. the end of the year. And, and the one-second installation, I mean, it's a little more than that. You, it does yeah, come with the back. Yeah, once you have to pair it and all that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you, you just open the compartment, throw the two AA batteries in, and then there's a little diagram you have to pay attention to the first time I put it on upside down. Um, I think the light switch has to be in the on position. You have to run the little motor in the back to the word top that's uh, on the switch mate itself. And then, but the magnet is very strong, and the little motor is very strong. So that's good, man. I I, I might be getting some of these too, uh, because you know I also have uh, lights at the front of my house uh, that are uh, they're halogen lights, and you just can't you can't make that type of light uh, a smart light with a um, 
traditional light bulb, you have to use uh, the uh, some sort of switch technology uh, to make that happen. This looks like a uh, really good si uh, uh, solution. Um, on top of that, uh, you can put them all next to each other on, if you have multiple toggles uh, on a a wall. You could just it looks like there's enough uh, clearance. Uh, they're kind of showing this diagram. Oh, that's uh, so right funny. Here. Okay. <laughs> hey, Diggity, uh, we lost you for just a second. But uh, yes, I know. So we the it looks like you can put these next to each other if there's multiple. Uh, switches on a wall. There's enough clearance, do you think? No, no, I, I, I think... Because it's showing it. It says switch it, compatibility. It's showing it, but, but Chad, you look at the size of this That's thing. what I was the, wondering. Yeah, no, I, I believe it does say works only on single gang light switches. Hmm. Okay. Maybe there's something uh, else coming out, because it says... May, I, I was just going to say, the, the, this guy's very industrious. He used to he used to run another company. I forgot the name of it. It was like one of the first to to uh, make uh, picture um, wireless picture frames that could also show TV. Yeah, you see, it, it it's rather big. Yeah. Current license below or a couple different configuration. Okay, so yeah, you could do one of the. Oh, there you go. So you could pick the middle one. Yeah, uh, or, I see. or something I see. like that. Okay, yeah. that makes sense. Yeah. Gotcha. Well, you could stick up. You could. <laughs> you I could wedge a, a wedge a pencil back there, so that when <laughs> the when when the toggle went up, it, the pencil would stick out and hit the other two switches. But I doubt it. That's interesting. Okay, well, that's another. Gosh darn it! I'm going to be buying all all the products in uh, this Gizwiz. Oh uh, well. Uh, episode. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Well, okay, then uh, well, well, let's go to the third one, which also is brand new and not coming out to the end of November. But I don't know if you're a big enough jock to want this. Here we go. Hey, Dickie Bartolo, Mads Mendes, trying to end the Gizwiz One Take Theater here at gizwiz.tv. We're at Jabra. You know, they make all kinds of headphones, Bluetooth stuff. I just saw, saw something neat that's coming out, so... All right, Apple has their little earbuds, but Java has something really neat with an interesting case. And we're talking to Adam, and Adam, what are we calling these? You'll have to zoom in quite a lot over there, they're quite small. So what these are is the Jabra Elite Sport, which for us is the world's most technically advanced headphones that we've ever developed. Now, the key thing about them is, as you notice, is that they're truly wireless. You've seen a lot of this in the press, but what that means is that you have absolutely no wire between any of the devices. Everything is wireless. It's wireless from your phone to your earbuds, and it's wireless between the two. And that just gives you a whole new and unique training experience. You don't have to worry about cables tangling, and you just go out there and you focus on your workout. How, how many hours of uh, listening can you get out of a pair that's charged? So the main features on this is that it has three hours of workouts with the sensors and everything. Uh, you get three hours out of the earbuds, but then you get two additional charges from the carry case itself. So the carry case charges your head, but ear earbuds on the go. Yeah, this is what I love. So where do you charge the case? So the case you charge via a regular micro USB on the side, and then the actual headphones themselves just charge from the device. So when they run out of power, you just lay them in the case. The case is not charged to anything. And, and do you know about how long it would take to recharge them? It has a feature called fast charge, which gives you 15 minutes or give you an hour. And then after that, it takes anywhere from 30 to 90 minutes, depending on how much you've used. But I think one of the main things when we look at the product is when we say the world's most technically advanced, at least is this has both a built-in heart rate monitor and it has a built-in motion sensor. So we'll be able to actually read your heart rate and pick up your body motion and actually give you real-time coaching during your workout and be able to tell you how fit you are, how well you're training, and guide you through a personalized training program that actually works for you because we can basically tell you. Is there a switch where it could do my workout and give me the benefits of it? Um, good question. No, but... Next year's mod. Bad, good question. Terrible answer. 
one day I think we'll be living in that Wally world where it floats us around. But for and, now, and so all this information is going to your app? So we have the Jabra Sport Life app, which I can show you on screen over here. So this is the Jabra Sport Life app. What happens is all the information will get sent, and uh, excuse me, I was, all the information gets sent to the app. It tells you how well you're doing. You tell it what sort of exercise you want to do. So let's say you just want to do a light exercise. Because we know your fitness level and your heart rate, we'll make sure that whatever exercise you're doing, you're staying in that cardiovascular zone. So if you go too high, we real time will give you a command back to your ear saying, slow down, speed up, things like that. That's the benefit of having both your ear and your heart rate in one place, is wow. we can actually- So it, it takes the heart rate from the ear drum, right? Yes, yeah, so the way it works is it actually uses just light, infrared technology, but it basically reads your heart rate from inside your ear because the ear is a great place because the skin is very thin and the capillary buildup is very thick. So you've got a good place to read your blood vessels and then it just reads your heart rate from there very reliably and then sends it through to the device. Now, the big question is, and this may increase your heart rate, the price. So don't be too scared, it is $249 which is comparable to a lot of the stuff out there. The big thing for this first, say, I mean, I might as well say it, the Apple EarPods at 159. The big thing that you're paying extra on top of that is the heart rate monitor, the motion sensor, the training apps. But on top of that, this is a pair of sports headphones. So it has a whole host of fit options. You've got a whole lot of ear gels, ear wings, so you'll have a way more secure fit for sport activity. And the little cherry on the top is that because they're sports headphones, they're IP67 rated, which means technically fully submersible in water. Are they out now? They will be out by the end of October in Best Buy in North America, and that's where we'll be able to pick them up. Okay, and the name again of the product is, oh, we'll just show the box. So it's the Sport Elite. The Elite Sport. The Elite Sport, <laughs> sorry about that. No problem. Uh, it does not cure dyslexia. Uh, no, but it does help you lead a slightly healthier lifestyle. A healthier lifestyle. Vicky Bartolo, Maz Madness writer, and the Gizwiz, one take theater here at gizwiz.tv. Waiting for the next version where it does the workout for you. Bye. <laughs> so, man, that is a lot packed in to a headphone. Uh, <laughs> you got, I mean, just to run through just the checklist of features, is totally wireless, so it has a, a charging case. Fast wireless charging. Uh, you have, you know, for an, uh, you know, for 15 minutes gives you an hour. Hour, right? Uh, you have a heart rate monitor inside, which is constant because it's getting it from your ear. From your ear, and then it's also waterproof. Uh, that's quite a lot in a headphone, uh, and it works with their fitness app um, as well. Yeah, wow, that's a uh, yeah. very technically advanced headphone. Yeah, and I love that case. What a clever idea is to have a, a, a battery in the case so that when the headphone runs out, you can charge it in your pocket right. from the case right. two more exactly. times. See, basically you can get a total of nine hours. And my, my typical workout is usually no more than like six and a half hours. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> so, so this will be fine for me. Yeah. There, or yeah, was it six and a half minutes? Something like that. <laughs> six and a half seconds for me. Um, <laughs> yeah, going up the stairs. That's my workout. Uh, uh -huh. And then you get some, uh, some coaching with, uh, when it talks back to the app. I mean, that's uh, pretty, pretty incredible. Uh, the amount of uh, stuff they packed into uh, those headphones. This this yeah. feels like you'd almost get this over, say, uh, an Apple Watch because your Apple Watch will also take your heart rate. Your Apple Watch does. Uh, you can use lots of free apps to do some sort of coaching, um, but of course they're not headphones at all. So. Uh, this seems like a, almost like a, something, if you didn't have an Apple Watch and you wanted to make sure that your heart rate was being taken while you're doing a workout, uh, this seems like a, a, a good solution. A, w a way to go. Something to think about. And, um, and as I said, uh, more info to the link. And actually, w there's a link with some more info, but it's not even available for pre-order yet, but will be soon. Perfect. Okay, moving on. I'm very excited to talk about our sponsor for this episode, Warby Parker. 
Now, Warby Parker did something really cool. They actually sent you the home try-on kit uh, for you to test out. Tell me. Uh, yeah. Did you, you know, let me let me just tell you what the kit is. Yeah. Um, it's sort of interesting some... it, it, is when I heard there's an eyeglass thing, I thought, oh, everything is so expensive. But this is a great idea. So if you don't have a store near you, you shop online and you pick out five frames that you would like to try and they send you the five frames and i i think it's like three weeks to a month and there's plain glass in them but this way you can see exactly what they look at and they're very clever because each bag has the model it is and of course i'm taking them off and i'm trying them on and i'm saying dennis you want to try them on and suddenly i have everything mixed up and then <laughs> you're on, glad on the, the bag has a model yes on. <laughs> the edge of the frame tells you exactly what model it is and then and this is a nice way to try on some glasses at home without the pressure of uh, a person standing next to you. Exactly. Saying, hey, hey, you know, exactly. I got other customers here. Why don't you, you know, go faster? Uh, and then uh, <laughs> Dennis doesn't like back. those. <laughs> yeah. Those are great. When, it's great. And then there's, a, there's a, a return label in the box. And when you're done, you put the glasses back in there close the box, seal the box with a piece of tape, put the label they sent you on the box, and send it back. And then you can, if you want, you send in your uh, prescription, which they say should be no more than a year old, and they, can, they make your glasses in the frames that you picked out. The best thing is, there are, I think, th three different price ranges, but the lowest price range is $95. And that I mean, includes... I that it, now, okay, so th this is what I love because I just, with a friend, I went through the process of a competitor. And this is a killer, killer price for glasses um, because my friend would not only did they spend more, but they also went through insurance. So their, ins their insurance price cost more than, uh, you know, the, 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 a pair of Warby Parkers. For ninety five dollars. Which at ninety five dollars, yeah. And here's the things that's included. You go to an, a competitors. It's like you're buying a car. They're like, <laughs> we could add in mechanical hinges, but that's going to cost an extra. This is what you get. You get anti reflective, anti glare coating. You get a hard case. You get a cleaning cloth. Um, the styles are, of course, absolutely amazing. Glasses. Hundreds. Are, hundreds, hundreds of styles, and also. Glasses are really a fashion accessory when you think about it. I mean, nowadays, it's not just a medical device, which is what it's used for, but they're a statement of who you are. And all of the, um, all of the styles are just very, very classic, very nice. Um, and then you also, uh, all, this is made with premium Japanese titanium and French non-rocking screws. So everything is just built in and is just absolutely amazing. And if... If you're lucky enough to have a Warby Parker store nearby, which, Dickie D, you got to go to one. I did. So uh, nice. I don't know if you have that picture, but there are frames, hundreds of them, and there are Warby Parker people walking around, and if you have a question, you go to them. So I spent about 25 minutes to a half hour, Dennis was with me, both trying on frames, and no one bothers you. I, I used to hate it. What, I would end up with, with glasses I didn't like because you would go to a store and you would have to say, can I see those? And it, by the time you have put on the fourth pair, they're getting a little antsy that you're not buying anything. Here you just walk around, try on <laughs> all you want. <clears throat> and it, <clears throat> if you have a question, and, and one of my questions was, the gentleman said, do you have any questions? I said, yes. Uh, I, I like anti-reflective uh, coating, and I know it's $40 extra at, I wouldn't say the company's name, and the guy said, no, <laughs> your glasses have none, uh, a non-glare coating on them. That's part of the, I think it's $95, and then it's $30 more if your prescription is uh, a strong, and then more if it's like super strong, because they press the lenses so that you still have thin lenses it's an amazing thing uh, i i'm i'm thrilled i i i'm so glad that they're a sponsor because i could talk about how great they are all day long in uh an industry that kind of needed change warby parker 
uh, yes. is the forefront of that change. You can go through, they have, you know, absolutely uh, great selection of glasses. Um, they're just a great company. So, so please uh, check them out. Uh, you can go to warbyparker.com uh, slash gizwiz to find out more. And, uh, I mean, this is just uh, a really, really great company and uh, really, really happy that they're uh, part of the family here at Gizwiz. Um, yeah. Yeah. I'm exciting. Yes. And you're getting, uh, you're getting some glasses. What are uh, they... They said that after this runs, that that they're going to give me a pair of glasses. That's so cool. That is hopefully so with cool. my prescription. Yeah, that would be, and yeah, that'd be nice. <laughs> also, they also have sunglasses too. Polar yeah, you know, Den right? Dennis is going back there. He said, Dick. I, I said, Are these prices unbelievable. He said, I paid eight hundred dollars <laughs> by the time they got done with everything I wanted. Yeah. So yeah, this I is the way to this is, yeah, yeah, this exactly. is great. Exactly. So. so please head on over to warbyparker.com slash gizwiz yeah. to find yeah. out more. Yeah, use the slash gizwiz because that's the only way they know that you we heard us. We sent you. Exactly. Yeah. That'd be great. Exactly. That would be super. Thanks, Warby Parker, for sponsoring the gizwiz and being such a great company. Okay, moving on. I am excited about uh, this. Oh, my God. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for... Come on, monocaster. Oh, nine, four, there we go. Crappy corn. Oh, I'm dropping it. Get it. Oh gosh, pieces and are falling. And that <coughs> theme picked by our loyal Patreons is hobbies. Cheap hobby. Hobby <laughs> Cheap gadgets. Hobby gadgets. Um, so. Uh, well, I wanted to find something that was a do-it-yourself kit. Uh, that when I think okay. of, if I think of walking into a hobby store, to be honest, the first thing that kind of jumps to mind is uh, maybe like a, a do-it-yourself robot or um, you know a do-it-yourself plane, you know that sort of thing where you're you're going to be making something together. So uh, I found the electric plane launcher kit. And I thought that this was uh, the perfect kind of product, uh, do it your yourself um, hobby uh, thing. <laughs> is, this, is this a paper airplane? Yeah. Launcher? So it it, oh uh, my it launches a paper airplane. So included uh, inside the kit is a, a base plate. You got uh, some plastic discs to kind of. It says with pulley, but. It's not really a pulley. I think it means that it pulls the plane through there. Uh, you get a little battery box. You have two motors. You get washers. You can see it comes with all sorts of stuff inside. Um, and How about the paper airplane? It, you, you don't get the paper airplane. You do oh. have to support your, your supply your own paper uh, okay. for the paper airplane. Uh, it comes with instructions. Now, uh, this is where uh, the review of uh, this paper airplane launcher becomes a little critical because this was the most difficult thing to put together I have ever done since college. Um, it, so, so, I mean, I don't want to go through every single step that things were wrong, but let me give you a few <laughs> examples. First off, the pulleys, this is what they keep calling pulleys, these rubber discs, they don't look anything like the picture. On the picture, it looks like there's supposed to be some sort of um, almost like a ridge on top of these pulleys, but that's not there. It also looks like there's supposed to be a, a dot on top of these pulleys. That's not there. They're nice and flat um, on mine. It doesn't look anything like uh, the, the picture. You can even see on this uh, secondary one, there's some sort of ridge on the top. That's that's not there. Uh, they expected me to have this uh, bit of like cabling and then what? you're supposed to strip the insulation off the ends using scissors and all this stuff. That didn't exist. I didn't have this piece of, of wire. I had six pieces of already pre-stripped wire. I have two extras. I don't even know what to do with. <laughs> Um, the, the next problem is that, uh, I didn't realize that this screwdriver was in there. I went searching throughout the entire house, f trying to find the screwdriver, modified a, uh, a brush, uh, that you would use on a, uh, you know, clippers on a trimming, um, thing, you know, for your face. Uh, couldn't, couldn't figure that out. 
Um, next, uh, the the it, it suggests that you use uh, some sort of thing to keep these uh, pads all together. This was just a really frustrating project to put together. Um, now to demonstrate uh, what. Oh, this, you actually got it to work. I got it to work. Finally got it Whoa. to work. Whoa. Yeah, got it to work. It it took me, I would say, about thirty to forty five minutes. Remember, this is. Not, I would like to think I'm I'm smarter than a child. Um, but it took me <laughs> thirty to forty five. Well, there minutes. you turned out to be wrong. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so I actually uh, went ahead and uh, got it done and went out to the backyard to fly a few of oh uh, some some uh, some planes. So so here we go. Hey Dickie D. Okay, so the airplane launcher has been constructed. It's a little quiet. We're first, I have a few different airplanes to test out. We're first going to try out their model. That sounds they okay. Suggested that you cut the front off the airplane. So <laughs> okay. turn it on. I found that this really wouldn't uh, sit well on a uh, table because it was too. It oh, it's funny. Too it much. sounds like it adds airplane sound. Yeah, right. Is to kind of lay it in there and then push the back so you're not catching. Just gotta do this. They suggested to cut the the front off of an airplane. <laughs> okay. Now the traditional style of airplane. With the longer nose, nose not cut off. Okay. Now this one can catch the uh, the stuff a little early, so you gotta kind of get. Here we go. Here. Oops. <laughs> Did it stop running? Let's get a, let's yeah. Get a close up on this. Let's get a close up on this technique. Okay, you gotta you gotta feed the airplane in. Oop. See. <laughs> The motors aren't too great. And you gotta fire it. <laughs> it keeps hitting this gigantic bolt in the front. That's what it keeps doing. You gotta make sure it doesn't touch the bolt. Woo! There we go. That was a good airplane. Sorry about the gigantic truck in the back. Okay, we got the other classic style of airplane. This one has not been launched. This is a, a first, a test trial. Oop. Okay, that was kind of a crummy launch. Let's try it one more time. Now we did, we originally tried to just set the airplane in, okay, and launch it from a non-moving position so you can kind of get it nicely, nicely laid in there. Doesn't, doesn't work very well. So let's try it finally. Okay, well that's the airplane launcher. Uh, I have to say, it is uh, quite an improvement over just, uh... that's why you need the airplane launcher. Uh, so basically there's a, there is a big bolt uh, in the front. You know, we can go ahead and make a, a, an airplane uh, and just test it out here in the studio. Um, can you take that bolt out, or is that what is it's that bolt there. It, it, I guess it holds it holds the front suction cup onto. There's oh. there doesn't seem to be a lot of logic to <laughs> to this uh, creation, and I feel like a lot of it could be solved if just the instructions matched uh, what you got in the kit. A lot of a lot of the things that are in the kit aren't in the instructions or are completely different like <laughs> the uh the pulleys quote pulleys um which these i don't understand how these are pulleys at all pulleys are something that they're more like pushies <laughs> they are they're more they're more like you know just plastic discs um uh so there's a lot of things like that where it feels like the instructions are not as clear as as they should be um, and then, of course, I, I had a really big problem with the screwdriver. So let's go ahead and turn it on. <laughs> so, great sound. Um, and we'll see just how, how far, uh, you know, obviously. Lane the, for Burbank loading <laughs> at gate seven. Here we go. You got to push it from the behind. Otherwise, uh, you'll uh, kind of get it caught. Uh, in, and we got to avoid that gigantic bolt in the front. Oh, I hit the bolt. Okay, here we go. Test number two. Oh, it fell out. Woo! 
there we go. Exciting. So now, if you threw it, <laughs> would yeah. it not go about the same distance? Yeah, and then as it kind of works, it, it's you can see that the whole contraption's kind of moving. Oh, the whole thing flies. <laughs> it's kind of moving uh, all on its own there. Uh, <laughs> I, I guess I I really made that robot that I wanted to make uh, in the in the very beginning. Um, oh my God. What did this uh, piece of technology? <laughs> cost uh too much uh is the answer uh the airplane um here let me grab it it's gonna fall off the desk here um the airplane launcher uh was eleven dollars and 89 cents um there's also a few uh situations where getting these motors into these these eyelets was so difficult you have to, to push them in. Th I mean, it even explains the, the part of. There's so much wrong with this kit that it's actually a little bit difficult to uh, make sure to 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 gather it all co cohesively. Um, you know, push the plastic rings to the base plate holes. Cool. Push the electronic motors into the plastic rings. They will be very tight, but a tiny amount of Washing up liquid on the plastic will help. What oh, is, dish detergent. What is washing up liquid? Dish detergent. Yeah, it's just, it doesn't seem like it uh, was very well thought out. Uh, so here on Amazon, it has uh, 77 reviews, and uh, it's only $11.89 prime, uh, prime shipping. Boy, I'm kind of surprised it got three stars. Yeah. Me too. I would give this a big one star review. Also, who makes a plane where you cut off the front of the plane? Uh, that's ridiculous. I mean, this is these are directly from the instructions. Well, my guess is that they realize that if you cut the nose off, it tends to hit the bolt less. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Or I mean, it seems like the bolt shouldn't be there at all. Uh, yeah, right there. Yeah, exactly. The on, bolt should not be there at all. On step five, that's where it tells you to cut the nose off. Cut off the nose. That's the that's the plan. Despite your kit. <laughs> cut the front off of it. Right there. There you go. You got the perfect plane. Cut the front off. Um, oh, Chad, <laughs> do not use. Does it say do not use pointed plane for safety reasons? Oh my gosh! Front? I didn't read that. Warnings: Do not fold pointed plane design. For safety concerns. Oh, my gosh. That's why you cut the front off. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully no one at Boeing worked on this. Oh, my gosh. I didn't realize that that's why it that told you. Riot? you. Thanks for reading the fine print, Dickie. Yeah. Uh, probably that same company makes bobbed wires with no bobs on them. <laughs> Uh, no, we, we had them, but we took them off. It's a safety concern. Between the crummy instructions, uh, the extra parts, the parts that didn't work, the fact that it doesn't really fly very well, the bolt that's in the way, <laughs> and the crummy plane design, I give this a really crappy crap review out of crap. Uh, <laughs> we can put this one back in the corner, and let's, uh, let's move on. To Dick's Gadget Warehouse. They're geeky and they're goofy. Together they are loopy. When gadgets pass away, he takes them out to play. In Dick's Gadget Warehouse. Fog horn. On. Uh, um, okay, so, ladies and gentlemen... We are not done with arc lighters. <laughs> this is the lighters that keep on giving. <laughs> to keep on giving. I met someone at one of the trade shows who watched the uh, uh, Larry Gerson who said, I'm getting one of those, but you guys didn't know that over at eBay, they have a whole other crop of them, and they're like $10. Oh <laughs> Later on, I have to go to eBay. Well, anyway, our viewer video comes from uh, Brian Horowitz, who last week uh, sent us a letter 
about the crisscross device. And I said, you know, why don't you make a viewer video? You can win a mad and get a, an Alfred E. Newman picture. And so we can actually see yours in operation. And so Brian sent us his own viewer video. Oh, that's me. Yeah. And Chad, <laughs> this is Brian. I'm making this video to show you this lighter that I bought. And as you can see, it looks pretty nice. And the arcs do cross. And, and his makes make noise. Nice, satisfying sound there. Now, one thing I did find is that if you're buying this to light candles, if you have these jar candles, because of the lid, you can't get the lighter down in there to actually light the wick. But it does work fine if you have tapered candles or pillar candles or other types of candles. It's just these jar candles it doesn't work very well for. But So this is the uh, cross arc lighter and uh, overall I'm pretty happy with it and it's uh, definitely a conversation starter. And then his video just ends. <laughs> so, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I hope I'm not having uh, problems he, with he, videos. <laughs> he also added that I think I sent you the wrong link because the lighter I bought is branded PARD, P A R D, not Corvos, but it's just another one of those products that's made by one manufacturer and rebranded uh, many times. I enjoy the show every week. I've been watching since the first episode. Back in it was back when it was the Daily Gizwiz, uh, Brian Horowitz. Wow! So yeah. you're telling me that eBay, eBay is the place to look for these guys. Yeah, give a look because I need one of those crisscross. I need one of those. I think that's the. Um, oh, there's one. Oh, you know what? You this know is that one. Blue. That uh, oh this, wow that almost looks like no that's just a single arc right there oh. that but the dragon threw me off i thought the dragon was crisscross um no single arc. oh no maybe they're not that maybe there is no crisscross but this is definitely the right uh you know price point at, at yeah $9. they are half the price here's oh oh, oh found one Nine dollars and sixty-five cents, crisscross. Oh That's my a word! Crazy I think gunmetal I... color. Yeah! Like... Wow. I wonder how long well, until these start exploding, and then uh... yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, I, I I noticed that there there was one for like two dollars, but we learned from uh, um I forgot who it was who wrote us all. Oh, about the smartwatches. Is that the guy who was, was saying, how can they sell those smartwatches for two dollars? It was just totally a scam. Right. And that as soon as you he got your payment, he sent out a, tr a fake tracking number. Right. That's right. To, to put you off for a couple weeks. Well, that is true. There are arc lighters for nine dollars that are the the the. Oh, I'm going to get one. Double uh, arc. I am going to get. And one. then there's just that? these real classy lighters. I mean, this is the classiest. Types wow. Of oh. Gold. Oh, it's and it gold. comes with 10 ounces of gold. Yeah. I mean, it is 10 ounces of gold. The whole wow. thing. I mean, people <laughs> just see that and they think, what a classy guy. I mean, <laughs> I bet he is successful at business. You know what? Isn't that his lighter? Brian's lighter go up like one or two. That lighters? one, you're right. The $16 one. Oh, but it's way up there. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, but who it, it, knows? I mean, I could yeah. scroll for two more days. I know. That's the it. thing. <laughs> I mean, I thought we had found something new, but my gosh. Anyway. Um, this must be some big craze. You know, uh, part of me feels uh, like. I think we're starting it. Uh, yeah. Uh, I feel like it hasn't hit America uh, yet. You know? Uh, my, my meager little. I want. I don't have a Crisco. I have this little weak thing. <laughs> it looks and so I paid, sad. I paid seventeen dollars for this. <laughs> the thing is, I I saw. I like the uh, the button the better. The button on the side, and I sort of like. Yeah, but anyway, <laughs> it takes so little to entertain the Gizwiz uh, audience and us. It just takes an arc of electricity an and arc then of weeks of content from us uh, at the Gizwiz. Uh, moving on to the letter uh, 
when the letter doesn't play, we don't dance. Oh, well, I think we're, I think I broke the letter. Uh, oh, here. my God. Here come the letters. Oh, there we go. And our letter says, looking for something on Amazon, I found two items I think you will find interesting. You have the links to these, right? I do. There? I got them. This person is very funny. I found this. And as you can see, they couldn't find a camera to take a picture of their product. So look at this. Okay. Well, oh, the second link is taking a little while to open here. Okay. Um, what? Okay. So here we go. Tr Donald Trump toilet roll. Funny. Okay. Wait. What? Okay. Oh, this there, there. Okay. The National Hardware <laughs> double close hooks in in Chrome. What? And someone just <laughs> threw <laughs> a crappy <laughs> picture. <laughs> It looks like a really am, sad I, octopus is what it looks I, like. I a two-legged octopus. I can't octopus. believe that Amazon. <laughs> one customer. Oh, one here. review, which is by the guy. I who was drawing said, a picture of my, <laughs> of my closet and couldn't get the double clothes hooks to look realistic. My angles were all off because my drawing, uh, to lose a certain sense of... Uh, we're all off, causing my drawing to lose a certain sense of realism. Thank God I found these. I purchased three of them and placed them on my drawing. Now it is complete. I only wish what? they made a shoehorn. I struggle with that. I don't get that at That's all. just a joke. Some people just write jokes. Oh, oh, oh in the review. Joke oh, reviews. Okay. He's saying, oh, okay. oh, he was trying. Luckily, they <laughs> sell the exact version he drew. Oh, that's very funny. That's very and funny. And then there's all this information about the product. Uh, I, I, I just don't... <laughs> manufactured of zinc die cast. Heavy, extra heavy for added strength. <sighs> Uh, oh, that's very funny. I want to buy it for six dollars. Just see what comes in the mail. Um, yeah, that looks like a really, really sad octopus. It does. It's it just, does. Aw. <laughs> and then um, Ernesto it... had a second thing. Oh, I see. Um, the second thing is the toilet paper. You could get Donald Trump or Hillary Clinton, but there, I read some of those reviews. And a lot of them are ripoffs also, where the first six sheets have a picture on them and the rest of the roll is blank. Oh my so gosh. some people got rolls with the pictures uh, printed all the way through, and some people got rolls with just the first six sheets printed. <laughs> So. It's that much. I mean, you get the, as exactly as much as in this photo. Photo. <laughs> You're done. On, on some of them. I bet. I bet. Um, Ernesto says, I think this would make a great gift. That's a toilet paper. Uh, thank you. As always, your friend, Ernesto Rodriguez, San Juan, Puerto Rico. So, Ernesto, thank you. That That hook... <laughs> That I have never funny. ever seen a crappy kid's drawing in an ad. <laughs> Some professional drew that and thought that it was okay to <laughs> add as a placeholder. Or there's some some sad you know person who just had to fill in some image and did their best with MS Paint and came up okay. with that image. I, okay, oh my gosh. and I think that was the man whose previous employment was doing instructions <laughs> for the for, plane for launching. For the, the 4M uh, electric plane uh, launching kit. Device. Yeah. Uh, fun mechanics kit. Yeah, absolutely. 
I, I can't believe that you cut off the front of a plane so that it's not a, a paper safety plane. hazard. Safety, yeah. Oh my gosh. Uh, okay. So, whoops, sorry. Uh, that is the letter. Don't forget that we are having a Gizwiz meetup. Uh, at yeah, the Bug Basin not, Cafe? Not like three weeks. Oh my god, it's it's coming up real fast. Yes. Uh, you can go to gizwiz.biz and then click on Dick's log and blog to find out more information right here. Uh, it's at the Boat Basin Cafe on October yes, yes, yes. 2nd from 2 to 4 p.m. And uh, we hope to see you there. If you could RSVP to the email address uh, uh, on his website at the uh, log and blog. And uh, we'll know yeah, about and the, how many. The, uh, the, the, just, just write, all you do in the subject line is put two or four or one. Just, just so I have a vague idea. Of vague, how many yeah, exactly. Uh, 20 to 30, exactly. No, I'm just <laughs> yeah. um, so please, if you're going to be in the area, come on down. That'd be yeah. great. Uh, also, and while Chad will be there. I'll Chad. be there. I'll be there flying in from uh, San Diego uh, to get there. Uh, also, check out what the heck is it? Because we got to know what the heck it is. Uh, this is the product we're trying to figure out uh, what it is. Um, it's pretty obvious. Uh, to me, this is a, uh, a ballerina set, topper set. <laughs> it's You know what it is? It's a way to make sure you don't get chalk on your fingers when you're making chalk outlines on the, uh, you know, this is like professional tool for police officers. I made that morbid real fast. Okay. Um, <laughs> who knows what this is? If you have a good idea, get on over to gizwiz.biz and make a guess because there's 12 Mad Magazines signed by Dickie D himself uh, for correct answers and 24 for a hilarious, funny, uh, clever answers. So uh, get a guessin'. We're recording this episode a little bit early, but if you subscribe to the show, don't worry, nothing has changed. You can subscribe at gizwiz.tv. Also, if you a little bit early, but if you subscribe to the show, there we go. If you want to watch the show live, like I was just doing just then, uh, <laughs> you can go over to gizwiz.tv and uh, watch the show there. Uh, our website changes whenever we're live, so you can see the live stream. And join the chat room just below. Underneath that, there's the links to subscribe and all of our past episodes for you to check out. Also, while you're there at the website, why not check out our Patreon? Just click on the Patreon tab. There's a link to our Patreon. Or you can support one time via PayPal. And a big thank you to our patrons you guys support us every single show. It really makes a huge difference. If you're not familiar with what Patreon is, it's a place for you to support independent content creators like the Gizwiz, like me and Dick. And yeah. uh, big thank you to everyone who supports the show. It, that is fantastic, and we really, really appreciate you. Anything I'm forgetting? I no, I think uh, we're back to normal next week. Back to normal next week for a little while. See you next episode. I'll be here. <laughs>